On September 1st, 1859, there occurred an event so powerful, it would change how we view our place in the universe forever. Although no one knew it at the time, a solar storm had erupted off the sun and plowed straight into Earth. It was so massive that its effects were felt across the globe. I'm Daniel Ryan. I'm a PhD researcher of solar physics here at Trinity College Dublin. And I'm here to tell you about the importance of solar storms and why my research is helping us better understand the wonders and dangers of living with our closest star. The following day at daybreak, the skies across the world turned into a spectacular light show as the northern lights, or aurora, appeared as far south as the Caribbean and Hawaii. Telegraph machines, including those at Valencia County Kerry, began erratically and inexplicably transmitting unaided. Some operators received electric shocks, and others even reported the telegram paper being set on fire. The London stock prices were not received in Dublin that day, and magnetometers measuring the Earth's magnetic field across the world showed massive fluctuations. The 1859 solar storm was the first and biggest ever recorded. The effects across the world were unprecedented and unexplained and may have remained that way if someone had not just by chance been looking in the right place at the right time. The day before those spectacular aurora were sighted, Richard Carrington, an English astronomer and one of the foremost in his field, was sitting in his private observatory at Red Hill, Surrey, viewing the sun with an 11-inch telescope. He was sketching dark discolorations on the sun's surface known as sunspots. Suddenly, the region he was sketching exploded with light before quickly fading away over the course of about five minutes. As incredible as it seemed, Carrington realized that this event was responsible for the global chaos the day after. Somehow the Carrington flare, as it came to be known, had disrupted the Earth's magnetic field, inducing massive currents in electrical systems like telegraph lines, and producing aurora in places never before seen. Humanity had woken up to the sun's true destructive potential. Today, we depend more than ever on electrical technology, such as the internet, satellite communication, and electrical power grids. This has made us far more vulnerable to solar storms than in Carrington's day. In 1972, a solar storm caused the long-distance telephone line in Illinois to go down, while in 1989, the entire power network of Quebec was knocked out, leaving six million people without power for nine hours. Should our modern system suddenly fail, the cost could run into trillions of euros and could potentially plunge entire societies into chaos. Our ability to forecast solar storms is therefore becoming more and more vital to preserving our way of life. Fortunately, there are people right here in Ireland working to do just that. Based here at Trinity School of Physics is the Astrophysics Research Group, headed by Dr. Peter Gallagher. Here, we are conducting groundbreaking research into solar storms, along with colleagues at NASA's Goddard Space Flight Center. But in order to be able to predict these violent events, we need to better understand the processes which drive them. So what is a solar storm, and how do they work? Well, it all starts with the sun's magnetic field. Just like the Earth, the sun has a magnetic field. However, unlike the Earth, the sun has no solid surface. Instead, the sun is made of plasma, or electrically charged gas. This plasma rotates differentially. That is, it rotates faster at the equator than at the poles. As the plasma rotates, it pulls the magnetic field around with it, causing it to become chaotic and disorganized. In places, the magnetic field breaks through the surface, forming active regions. These can often be seen as dark sunspots, like those sketched by Carrington. As the magnetic fields are jostled around by the plasma below, they can become pinched, stressed, and twisted, until eventually, they snap. This process is called magnetic reconnection, and is believed to be the cause of solar storms. Once this energy is released, the active region is heated to millions of degrees. High energy radiation, such as X-rays, UV rays, and incredibly fast particles, as well as plasma and magnetic field, can be sent hurtling out into space. When a solar storm hits Earth, it disrupts our magnetic field, which normally protects us from the harmful radiation in space magnetic fields become coupled together, causing particles to spiral down towards the Earth's poles. As these particles strike the atmosphere, they cause the aurora. However, they can also induce electrical currents in the atmosphere, which can devastate ground-based technologies. 
In addition, the radiation from solar storms can destroy satellites and even kill astronauts. Therefore, it is imperative that we are able to predict when solar storms will hit the Earth. But in order to do that, we need to know more about what drives them. This is where my research comes in. Since the 1970s, the GOES, or Geostationary Operational Environmental Satellites, have been continuously measuring X-rays from the Sun. When a solar storm happens, it causes a big increase in the number of solar X-rays. By studying these X-rays, we can calculate properties of the solar storms like temperature, density and energy. Because GOES has been observing the Sun longer than any other satellite mission, we have been able to analyse the energies of every solar storm in the past 30 years, something no one has ever before done. By studying solar storms over these timescales, we can see that they are not entirely random, but follow an approximate 11 year cycle of activity, known as the solar cycle. Previously, scientists tended to study solar storms as isolated events, but now, for the first time, we will be able to study solar storms in light of what they really are, part of a long-term cyclical process that will increasingly affect our future. Our research will give us an unprecedented view into the fundamental physics that drives solar storms, and therefore will allow us to better predict them as we head into this new decade. The work we are carrying out here at Trinity College Dublin is helping us ensure that as our society advances, we will be able to protect the technologies upon which our schools, businesses and emergency services so vitally depend. But more than that, it is helping us better understand the universe and our place in it. In short, it is teaching us what it really means to live with our closest star.